So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at shooting down at the coast. Um, we'll be heading down to Shingle Street, which is where this image was taken, and it's one of my, my favourite images of mine. Um, I love the simplicity of, of the location down there, and I think this shot kind of sums it up really well. Um, I converted it to black and white, or shot with black and white in mind really, because again, it's all about simplifying the image down to its bare bones. Um, the sweeps of the shingle banks down there, combined with the sort of isolation of the cottages, really kind of suits the location and really gets the atmosphere across. We'll be looking at some of the difficulties first of, of shooting on the coast. Um, one of the main things to do is I always check the tide times before we go, because the last thing you want is to be cut off. It's very easy to get carried away when you're shooting and, and you look around, especially around the kind of the east coast. You can very easily find the sea has come around behind you and you're stranded on a little island and you're going to have to wade through. It's not what you want. So check the tide times. I tried to shoot on an outgoing tide, partly for safety, but also partly because it, it sweeps the beach clean as you as the tide goes out and you'll lose lots of footprints and all the mess that's been sort of gathered during the day. On an outgoing tide, that's often cleaned by the outgoing sea, so, so that's a good reason to shoot when the tide's going out. Um, normally check the sunrise and sunset times, depending on what time of day you're going as well, so get there, we'll, we'll aim to get there just before sunrise, so if we get a spectacular sunrise, we're in position, we've got a composition, we're ready to go. Um, some of the difficulties of, of shooting down at the sea, uh, you're facing a continual battle often, Probably less so at Shingle Street, but on when you're on a, a sort of a beach where the sea's fairly rough, sea spray, take plenty of lens cloths, take lens spray, keep your lens clean all the time because you'll often find that even two minutes after sort of cleaning it, you'll need to give it another quick clean because you've got you've got a, a fog of, of water across your lens. Um, weather conditions are often a big part of shooting down at the, the sea. Strong winds coming in across the seas, so. Um, it's worth taking an umbrella and it's worth sort of being prepared for the elements because often bad weather is when you get the best shots and you don't want to have to retreat into your car just because there's a big storm coming. You want to be able to shoot that storm. So being prepared is a big, a big part of it. So we'll, um, we'll head down there now and um, hopefully we'll be able to get some, some good images. We're down on Shingle Street Beach in Suffolk, um, which is a, a lovely location, one of my favorite locations. I uh, come here quite a lot. It's a um, it's quite an unusual spot. Lots of shingle banks and tidal lagoons, and obviously we've got the coast over behind us and some sunshine going on behind us now. Um, Been down here for sunrise. Um, it's a great location for sunrise anywhere along the east coast is really because the sunrise is over the sea. So I come down this location quite a lot because it's 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 quite an unusual spot. Um, it's very isolated feeling. There are lots of shifting banks of shingle which which make for interesting compositions which obviously change quite a lot as well which is is great for a photographer um the uh, setup that i'm typically shooting with here is um i use my canon 5d mark ii i've got um i've got a zeiss 18 millimeter lens on so a super wide lens which is really good for adding to the the, the feeling of isolation you get here and the expanses of, of shingle it kind of really accentuates that and makes it really sort of adds to the mood. Um, <clears throat> I've got a Lee foundation kit filter holder on with a, I've been using a few filters but at the moment I've just got a, um, a Nisi 0.9 reverse grad on which is good for when you've got bright sunshine on the horizon. It can knock back that, that line of, of sunlight without affecting the rest of the sky too much. Um, I've also got a, a 6ND Lee filter on there which is just for slowing down the exposure a little bit and getting a bit of movement into the waves which I've just been shooting. Um, on top of that I've got a Lee Landscape Circular Polarizer on which I nearly always have on my on my kit and um, I use that at the coast is great for cutting out reflections on, on the shingle and you can alter the look of the light slightly using it, you give it a, a rotate of the um, polarizer and you can you can cut out reflections, you can change the, the dynamic of where the light is on the water or on the rocks and um, so that's really useful really handy bit of kit and it also adds an extra two stops to the exposure so again it's good for slowing slowing it down a little bit and add a bit of movement to that water without going for a very long exposure but it just gives a little bit of movement which is, is quite a nice nice mood enhancer. A typical settings at a location like this I, I tend to shoot 
mainly around F8, F11. I, I don't tend to go much above that. Um, a lot of the uh, magazines will often tell you to, to get maximum depth of field. I, I personally quite like it when you've got a little bit less depth of field because it adds to the adds to the move, mood of, of an image quite a lot. And um, you know, the human eye doesn't see everything in perfect clarity all the time. So I quite like the when the focus drops off a little bit into the distance and you can you can help focus the viewer of the image onto the areas you want to be in focus rather than having everything in focus throughout which which can look a bit lifeless sometimes I think. Um, generally on ISO 100 if I'm on a tripod because it um, gives you the, the the best image quality really on, on the Canon anyway you can go lower than that depending on your camera obviously but um, if you're on a tripod you don't particularly need to go on a higher ISO setting so um, I generally shoot somewhere like this between f5.6, f11, depending on um, what sort of shutter speed. Sorry, I want to um, I want to achieve. Always have my camera on manual um, just to give you that extra bit of control. If you have it on shutter speed priority or aperture priority, you're then letting the camera make some of the decisions. When I like to be in control myself and choose the shutter speed and the aperture that I want, so manual gives you that extra extra control over that. So that's something I, I generally always shoot on a tripod. I'm not a, a fast worker, so um, it's, it's, it kind of suits my style. It allows me to check the composition and make sure I'm happy with it. I, I generally shoot on live view, again, so I can really look through the composition and have a good look and make sure I've got all the elements that I want and I've, everything's slowing me down, which kind of helps me to make sure I've got the composition I want. The lens I'm using is manual focus only, so again, something which gives me that extra bit of control rather than using autofocus. I generally always work in manual focus just to give me that, that extra degree of control over the image. I can select it on the live view and choose exactly where that point of focus will be and make sure it's spot on every time. When you're, when you're shooting at a coast, there are a few things to, to bear in mind. Obviously the light is, is always very important. Um, on a day like today, we've got nice skies and it's, it's reasonable light, so I'll probably be shooting a lot of stuff in colour. Um, if you've got greyer, duller skies, it's often worth thinking about a composition in black and white rather than having flat, lifeless colour. Um, and then you're looking for shapes and forms more than more than the colours of the sky and, and so forth. Um, a few things to bear in mind, obviously this is shingle. If you're on a sandy beach, the same thing applies, your footprints. Be careful where you walk because there's nothing worse than finding the perfect composition and then realise you've left your big boot prints all the way up to the composition. And that, that applies to shingle as well, such as here, it leaves very deep footprints. So bear in mind as you arrive at the location, just where you should be, where you think you might be composing from and just walk around the outside of where your image is likely to be because otherwise that's a lot of retouching to do later, which nobody really enjoys and it's not much fun. Another good little tip is if, if you're trying to get that, those movements into your waves or into the foreground on a back rolling wave, if you try and time it so that you're you're taking your shot as the tide, as the wave rolls back, you'll find that actually you get much nicer patterns and if you get them coming in it can be a little bit foamy and the, the backwash is often the nicest part of a wave when you're, when you're shooting on a, an exposure of say a second or around that. Another thing you can always try at the at coastal locations is using a long exposure. If you're early on a morning, which I'm often shooting at, you don't really necessarily need a 10 stop filter to achieve those because the low light will get you the, the 30 second one minute exposures. But if you're using something like a, a big stopper or a, a little stopper or a fire crest, that's great for, for a day like today. You'll get movement in the sky and the clouds will, will give you that added interest. And obviously you get that milky water effect that lots of people like. Um, a couple of things you can try when you're doing that is a steady tripod is essential. You need to make sure your kit is as stable as possible for a long exposure like that. The Nikons have the blinds which cover the shutter but on a Canon you can always take off your eyepiece and you'll find on your camera strap you have a little mask which covers the eyepiece and stops any light leaking into the back of the camera which can have quite an effect on long exposure so it's worth doing that when you're doing long exposures. Another little tip is to um, just because you've got a 10 stop filter on still consider using a, a grad, a hard grad or a reverse grad or something because the same applies if, if you're doing a normal exposure, you'll still have the imbalance of exposure in the sky. So even if I'm using a, a big stopper, I'll still have a probably a six or nine hard grad on the top just to make sure the exposure is still balanced.
Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to have a look at the Wex blog for more tips and advice on landscape photography.